Howdy. As I learn little chunks here and there about Warhammer, I get more and more excited to add models to my collection. At the same time, however, I'm also learning more and more about kit bashing and better ways to get creative with what I have on hand. This intersection is where I find myself making my very own Demon Prince of Nurgle. I wanted to go easy on myself with this one, so I went searching for things I already had. Plus, we are in strict lockdown again, not that I personally ever wasn't, and supplies are low in the outside world. Kit bashing seems to be the model maker's bread and butter. We are taking things that already exist as their own objects and breaking them down to create a new object of its very own. Sometimes the elements are obvious, like, hey, that's a soda lid, and sometimes they are specifically designed parts, maybe even 3D printed, that could look different depending on how you place it within any given build. I cited several things in this process. One in particular was a PDF by Totally Not Panicking on Instagram. They are one of my personal favorite model makers. They recently came out with a 36 page guide to kit bashing, complete with lots of photos and some really good philosophy on the matter. So maybe give that a peek. I linked it down below. It definitely helped me sort out my brain. More on that general idea later. I didn't get crazy with found objects here, but I did have one little piece of plastic in particular that I loved and wanted to incorporate however I could. And this was a little snout from a plague drone that Trent sent me. I was totally stoked when I first saw this thing, but I knew that I needed to do it justice. So I held back from using it for a long time. This felt like the perfect moment. I would say the level of kit bashing here is low. I didn't do much to change the silhouette of the miniature I used for the bulk of the body, but that's mostly because I like it a lot already. I did consider lopping off the wings at one point, but it felt far less menacing without them. And some of the gross fleshy parts I did on the wings are my favorite little bits. So in the process of this video, I hit several speed bumps, several really large speed bumps, but I don't want you to worry or anything as I've gotten past them at this point. The results, however, the outcome or chain events did change the process of this build significantly. Normally with something this small, it's a one or two day project for me, minus editing, of course. I'm lucky enough at the moment to be able to spend an entire day devoted to making something like this from start to finish. In this case, I couldn't, and I actually had to take several days of breaks in between shooting some of these scenes. For many, that may be normal, but for me, it really threw off my creative flow. I'd like to imagine my creative flow like a river. It seems lovely and uninterrupted, but my creative space is sort of the sort of all-encompassing of my brain space. Sometimes linear thinking and sequences are just a figment of my imagination. I digress a little bit, but I guess my point is that I didn't have the opportunity to function as I normally do, but I still ended up with something that I like a lot. This is something that I credit kit bashing for. Something equally hard and beautiful about kit bashing is that it isn't a linear process. You don't have a manual or a script on how to make something look good. There are philosophies, like I mentioned earlier, and even something similar to best practices, depending on what you're making the model for, but no rules on how to make it look good. That can make it hard if you aren't feeling very creative. But at the same time, it opens up the infinite to you. Admittedly, I played it very safe with this one. I wanted a project that I could bang out quickly and feel good about. Even though that didn't exactly go according to plan, it wasn't a failure on the part of the model or even myself. There are just certain circumstances in life that we have to deal with day to day. Another excellent thing about the process is the ability to walk away and come back at any point and say it's finished whenever you feel like. 
That way, when life does come creeping up to give you a surprise, you can plop the model on the shelf for a bit and it will patiently wait for your return. You might even be motivated, inspired, and it never hurts to come back with a fresh pair of eyes. Especially if you aren't beholden to the rules of an RPG or a war game. If you're just making a model to make it, well shoot, I mean you are the master and commander of that journey. I'm not sure how it looks from the outside looking in, but I was playing pretty fast and loose with this one, as I do with most of the things I make for myself. I used a lot of super glue and baking soda to kick it. I knew that I would end up cleaning up the seams with green stuff anyways, plus on top of that, the painting style that I use for my Nurgle army is very, very forgiving. I wanted it to be that way so that it wasn't a pain to replicate every time I was able to add a model to the unit. I didn't think the original model needed very much, I really fancied the way it looked. For whatever reason though, I could never find an excuse to get it on the table for playing D&D. I went through a phase where I bought loads of those mystery pack D&D minis, as if I needed an excuse to feel like a kid again, but the surprise of what I could get or would get was really the best part. I can't say I recommend buying them though, they are a bit expensive for not even knowing what you're getting, but whatever, it happened. All that is to say, this little one came from one of those boxes. I know, long-winded. I suppose I could explain my paint scheme a little. It's not the most original look, but to be honest, I was looking to emulate something familiar to the hobby already. I haven't even played a game of Warhammer yet, and I know that not all of my models were going to be GW models. I have plans to sculpt even more. I want another great and clean one, maybe even two more, just because that build was so fun. Sculpting at that scale is way more forgiving than I thought it was going to be. So at this point, I actually want to ask you for help a little bit. I don't really care so much about the rules at the moment, and between Age of Sigmar and 40k, it doesn't really matter either. Part of the reason I chose Nurgle as a theme was because of its flexibility. But I do want some suggestions. I am happy with my current models and the scheme and all of that stuff, but I want more. I want to create more too. If you have any models in mind or lore that I could draw from that you think would complement what I'm doing already, I'd be delighted if you'd share them with me. I don't have a list of what I have, but it's not even close to exhaustive. Also, perhaps you just suggest something that you'd like to see. Like I said earlier, I still want to sculpt some miniatures of my own. I am also keen to mold and cast more things. It seems like we're coming up on another cool intersection here and I want to fully take advantage of all the creativity surrounding me. So that's my call to action. What model should I make, work on, or paint next for this unit? I will see you in the comments below. Also, of course, I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to everyone watching, including my patrons. Raquel recently did a live stream with her patrons. It inspired me to consider doing the same. If you're interested in any of that, I've got links below for you. Peep my Instagram for more updates on all the things too. Oh, and I am working on some shirts because enough of you were interested in them, so stay tuned. And thank you for hyping me up in that way. I do really appreciate that. Okay, um, have a good day. Peace out.